Hi, I'm Sanya. Uh, today we're gonna talk about image GANs for reducing pixelized supervision, which is the common theme of a couple of papers we have at CPPR next week. So in a lot of domains, such as autonomous driving, household robotics, uh, mapping, there is need for having pixel-wise supervision. What does that mean? So for every pixel, we wanna know that, you know, this is, all these pixels are cars, all these pixels are pedestrians, bicyclists, sofas, and here buildings. In particular, for something like self-driving, we might even wanna know uh, much uh, more detail. For example, that this here is a you know, head headlight, um, license plate, blinkers, and so on. Of course, for that, we need to have label data. And the main issue is that label data is extremely expensive and slow to collect. It takes about one minute per polygon to annotate. And this is especially you know, time consuming and expensive for domains such as medical imaging because you need experts such as doctors to annotate this data. But of course, if we go online, for example, here I'm querying Flickr, there's tons of imagery available, right? So here I was querying just the most common tags like car, van, bus, um, dog, and so on. And the number of images for each of these classes is in the millions. So we should be able to leverage some of this data which comes unlabeled, but is available um, vastly online. So there's been a lot of work recently in particular on self-supervised representation learning with the aim to reduce the need for label data by basically pre-training neural networks with uh, self-supervisions, you know, different variations of contrastive losses. I'm listing here just a few, but there's of course a lot more works on this. Most of these works, um, particularly the time we were working on this project, uh, were focusing on classification tasks only. So they were trying to train representations that, were, that would be really good for downstream classification tasks. So in our work here, we wanna utilize generative models and particular GANs as representation learning. Um, and we particularly wanna focus on pixel-wise tasks. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna consume photos of a particular class, let's say a cars, uh, with you know, one of the state-of-the-art generative models, Stalgen. So here I'm just showing samples generated by Stalgen. Um, as you know already, you know, Stalgen produces really uh, impressive photorealistic uh, you know, pictures of the object. Uh, this is just a schematic architecture of how Stalgen works. So you have a latent code, which is sampled from a normal distribution, which is then transformed into so-called style layers, which are injected into um, this synthesis network that eventually produces the image. So you can think of this latent code here as sort of, sort of a API into Stalgen. So it allows you to control what kind of images or what kind of content we're gonna be synthesizing. And the synthesis network we can consider because it has a spatial support as kind of like learned pixel-wise representations that are needed in order for, for Stalgen to, to render or produce an image. And here we're going to be uh, leveraging both of these um, parts of the generative model. All right, so first let's inspect Stalgen's API. So this is the latent, latent code. Uh, in particular, if you mess with that latent code a little bit, um, we can find that the first layers, first, style, first four style layers, um, kind of represent viewpoints and the remaining uh, style layers represent content. So now what you can do is you can freeze the latent codes for the content code, but vary the, the first four layers. So this is the viewpoint code. So essentially what this gives you is, is basically the same object or almost the same object, but the render in different viewpoints. And if you observe, uh, these images, you can see that you know there's quite a large uh, correspondence or uh, consistency across different images, even in with a scene behind this code. Now let's do uh, the reverse. So let's keep the viewpoint code fixed, so in each individual column here, uh, but vary the content code so it's each individual uh, row. So what we essentially get here is a synthesized different cars in different viewpoints. And there is large viewpoint consistency across each column over here. And this is 
precisely the data that we need for 3D reconstruction approaches, right? You, where you need multiple views of the same object. All right, so let's try to use that. So here we're gonna take a so-called inverse graphics network. This is based on our previous work uh, in 2019, where essentially we wanna train a neural network that takes an input image and then produces this explicit 3D representation, so mesh, light, and texture, which we now input into our renderer, so into our graphics renderer that renders out an image. Now, the main trick here is that if this renderer is differentiable, which we show and uh, several other works have shown uh, can, be, can be done, then the gradients from the loss can propagate back through this entire process, back to the weights of this network. So the loss can be directly defined on the rendered and the input image, okay? Now, what this paper also showed is that there's trivial solution to this problem. For example, just outputting a planar mesh and copying the texture as the original image. So the way to prevent this trivial solution is using multiple views of the same object during training and imposing consistency of this prediction across different views. Um, and this is basically the data that we need. So instead of us going out and taking pictures of the same objects from multiple viewpoints, we're simply going to use GAN generated views of different objects during training and use this DBAR network as an inver inverse graphics network. And this works uh, incredibly well. So on the left here, I'm showing input image and on the right side uh, are different viewpoints uh, of the rendered predictions. So you can see that the 3D is actually uh, captured by one. Here is a demo that now allows you to take an image and get the 3D out. So now you can plug this into any 3D scene and 3D rendering engine. And this was essentially done with super little supervision. The only thing we need to do is mess with StyleGAN to find this uh, viewpoint they don't code. All right, great. So um, StyleGAN seems to capture this kind of geometric or um, you know, viewpoint camera related properties, but maybe we can get more things from image GANs. So let, let's turn back to our StyleGAN networks over here. And in particular, let's inspect now the, the this learned pixel wise representations. Okay. And, and, and look, let's, let's look for a moment at the image of the StyleGAN generated, right? One thing to notice is that this, this really looks like it was taken by a camera. All the, all the pixels are in proper geometric places and proper semantic places. Even more than that, it looks like Stalgan understands ray tracing, the shadows, there's you know, light bouncing off the windshield over here um, and so on. So our thesis is that this learn pixel-wise representations in order for this you know, image rendering branch to render such images, they need to find correspondences across different objects. So they need to be somehow semantically and geometrically meaningful. I'm gonna try to explore that to essentially teach StyleGAN what is generating, okay? So what we're gonna do here is take one or several sample images from, from this generative model, and we're gonna ask the annotator to label it. In particular, we're gonna ask the annotator to label it to exact amount of detail that the StyleGAN is actually able to produce, which is quite a lot of detail. So here we're going to label, you know, front, like headlights, license plate. It even seems to be generating a logo here, door, door handles, not just wheel, but actually also parts of the wheel. So basically everything that you are able to read out from this image, we're gonna try to label over here. So the annotator would produce something like this and now our going to, goal is going to be to essentially modify StyleGAN just a little bit. We're gonna attach now a so-called label branch, same as there is an image branch over here. So now also produces the, uh, the semantic labeling of the image that the StyleGAN is already generating. And in particular, turning to the thesis before that, this learned feature representations are already somehow semantically meaningful and clustered and smooth then we're hoping that we only need very few manually labeled GAN generated images uh, to train this label branch uh, efficiently. In particular, we're just gonna use a very shallow MLP uh, on top of each pixel um, representation over here. 
Okay, so this brings us to our approach, data set GAN, which is going to be presented now, next week, where basically the idea is we have a pre trained style GAN, our sampling images, annotator is going to label a couple of them, very few of them. We're going to train this label branch. And now, essentially, if you look at this figure over here, we're essentially getting uh, style GAN, which turns to a data set GAN because it's not only producing images, but it's also uh, producing semantic labels. What does that mean? Well, this is a generative model. So now we can actually synthesize really large, basically infinitely large data sets, images along with their labels. Okay. And now you can take the synthesized data set just as you would as a real data set. So you can train any kind of downstream segmentation network on the synthesized data. And then hopefully you're gonna transfer to real world images. So in our work, we just train deep lab, but you know, these days maybe you wanna train a transformer um, and so on. All right, so this is showing our entire manually labeled data set. It's only 16 uh, examples for faces and 16 examples for cars. It's probably considered small even for a pre deep learning era in you know, 2011. Um, and we essentially, hired Antonio Toralba, who was also a co-author, a collaborator on this work, uh, his mother, who essentially labeled um, these images for us. And this was actually a really hard task just because of the level of detail we are labeling these images here. In fact, it took about half an hour or even longer uh, to label each individual image, which is probably almost the time that it takes to label the entire cityscape image over here. And in fact, most of the development time for this project was done on debugging these labels uh, as opposed to debugging code, just because when you have so little data to train with, you better make sure that all the labels are actually correct. So this is an example of a synthesized data set for cars by training all those 16 manually labeled examples. So these are the synthesized examples. Uh, both synthesized image and synthesized labels on the right side. So you can see this seems to work pretty well. And of course, maybe you want to push this and ask, you know, just how low you can actually get. So here we're just going to take, you know, the mean vector of Stalgan, so the most representative car uh, according to, uh, to Stalgan, and we're going to man manually label this car. And again, we're going to train the label branch on that single example and then synthesize um, you know, a larger data set, and this is how the synthesized examples look like. Okay, so this is actually pretty good given that we only gave it one single label example. And also notice that we label one particular viewpoint, but we are able to synthesize labels relatively correctly also in other viewpoints, which really means that uh, Stalgen here found these correspondences both semantic and geometric across different viewpoints and different objects. Uh, examples of synthesized data set for faces and also for other objects like birds and in the rooms, bedrooms here. All right, so I, I really love this plot over here. So what we have on the x-axis is the number of annotated images. So five here would be five annotated GAN generated images. On the y-axis is the mean uh, IOU of the segmentation network here evaluated on a real data set uh, AD car. Okay, so here are some baselines for uh, on semi-supervised learning, which are also have access to the same amount of unlabeled and labeled data as ours. Blue is our data get again uh, method where essentially we label data sets of 10,000 images and train a deep lab model of the, on this synthesized data set. And here in the red, is a fully supervised deep lab, which is trained on um, to 2.6 thousand, so almost a hundred times more uh, examples than, than, than all of these methods over here, okay? So the first thing to notice here is even when we have only a, one single training example, our performance is already really high. It's almost as high as other baselines achieve with like 25 or 30 examples. And what is, uh, the most impressive to me is here with 19 training examples, we essentially meet the fully supervised baseline that was trained with more than 100 times more labeled data. Okay, um, 
I also wanted to show this result. It's actually from, not from the data sign paper, but we have a similar idea, but with a different method uh, that exploits uh, Stalgin in a different way. So please check it out. Um, where we basically analyze the value of labeled and unlabeled data. So on the left side here, we're showing uh, in domain. So this is tested, uh, this part segmentation on Celeb A, which is you know, coming from the same distribution where we train Stalgen. And on the right side is matte faces, which is essentially, um, you know, paintings, um, uh, sculptures, and so on, which which look very different. Okay, so here I'm color coding uh, with red and blue numbers that roughly correspond. So what does this mean? So with 30 labeled examples and 28k uh, unlabeled examples. I'm almost matching the performance of 150 labeled examples and a lot less on labels of 3K labeled examples, unlabeled examples over here. Okay, so basically there's a trade off. So labeled examples are very expensive and manually consuming to get, time consuming to get. Uh, unlabeled is typically just widely available on the web. And you kind of can decide where on this table you want to land. Okay, and you can see that by essentially just increasing the amount of unlabeled data, it's almost matching the performance of having you know, five or even uh, 10x more labeled data. Um, yeah, and the interesting part that I kind of noticed in this table is that this performance is not saturated yet. So we kind of ran out of data on these data sets. Um, uh, so, you know, you, we could try more label, but also more unlabeled data. And I'm really curious what happens, how far we can actually push this. So some results for a part segmentation here, uh, where the second column is ground truth, and then the third column is our prediction. So you can see the results are actually uh, pretty nice. So just running the same network on, you know, some driving videos, or here, video of Jensen's and GTC talk. And now coming back to our 3D uh, project before. So before we were generating or predicting from M image a mesh, a texture that we can paste onto a mesh. But since now Stalgan also understands parts, we can also predict a part map on this 3D model. And this allows us to do really cool things because we can place materials that correspond to the semantic label of the part. We can also control, for example, the lights. We know that lights can switch on. And we can replace a rig tire with this predicted tire, which may not look so good. So I can get some really nice demo over here. Cool. Um, now that we have this amazingly detailed part segmentation that comes with the image, we can also have really detailed interactive image editing by essentially allowing uh, the user to just modify the part map in ways they want. And then we can modify the latent code, which modifies the image. So very simple idea. Let me just play this here for faces. All we're doing here is modifying the part map, which is very easy to do. Here's for cars. So it's another benefit of having the digital part segmentation. Uh, here are the resources, a project page and code as well as data should be released any moment now. And we're also preparing a benchmark. Of course, the question is, you know, there's also a lot of video online um, in particular, in, in particularly domains such as self-driving, which, you know, is may, maybe easy to collect this data by basically just driving around. So there's a few data sets available. And uh, we try to do that as well. So here we're going to train a neural network that's going to generate video. But in fact, it's not only going to generate video, it's going to condition on some sort of a driving control. We want to make it a neural simulator. So the user can actually uh, control the wheel, control the speed, and the neural network is going to paint the picture. And this, this architecture, you, you can hear about it next week. It's going to be presented here at CBPR. Um, it's essentially based on like um, Stalgan's architecture. And we're kind of leveraging some of the ideas from data Sengan, which allows us to disentangle and have an interactive simulator. So let me just quickly play this. 
So the user here is controlling the wheels, but we can also paint objects inside this video. And we can control different themes, such as making these images you know, cloudy weather, late afternoon, and so on. And again, we can do the same trick as with data set again, and we're just in the process of doing that. You can label some of this. Uh, generated frames, and now you can have this drive gun also synthesize labels. And of course, there's a lot of challenges associated to going to video as well as full scenes. It's much harder to generate a full driving scene than just a single object. So I think both the quality of semantic segmentation uh, and the generated image still needs to be improved. But you know, this is part of future work. Um, and you know, hopefully now I'll show you that anyone can create really amazing applications with very few labels, uh, which means that you know I'm I'm inviting you to just go and 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 label a lot of data, and for that we have been preparing a Toronto notation suit uh, at the University of Toronto. So with a few of my students have been working hard on this for a few years actually, which are trying to make AI assisted annotations. So let me just quickly play a demo here. And really the goal of this annotation web interface is to make annotation super easy. So not only you will now need very few labels uh, to create really amazing neural networks, but even labeling those few images can be super fast. So minimal investment of time. You can send us an email if you want to try this Toronto notation to the suit. All right, and with that, I'm going to finish and hopefully I convince you that image GANs learn really good geometric and semantically disentangled features that are useful for pixel-wise and 3D tasks. And hopefully you, you come by and, and annotate your data for various applications. Thank you. <laughs>